So this is a problem example we have seen previously also where we had that bolt which was undergoing this failure for which uh, at the failure point this was the state of the plane stress which you were having remember sigma x was minus 20 because it's compressive sigma y is a plus 90 and tau xy is a positive 60 that you have over here so now we are asked to do the same problem but now using more circle and you will see how easy it becomes to do this problem in using the more circle you don't have to plug it in different equa different equations you don't have to wonder that which theta corresponds to which sigma and so on so let's go ahead and do this so first i will draw the general shape of the more circle and start marking the different points which are there now remember one of the first things to start with is to find the central point or the point and C the center of the Mohr circle which is the where the stresses are average that is C that sigma average equals to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. So let me go ahead and calculate that and draw the circle and come back to you. So this is the Mohr circle which I have drawn now here uh, you see the positive sigma to the right and the positive you know tau to the below and the reason why you know this has sort of you know, spilled to the negative side over here because you remember our reference point of sigma x prime when theta equals to 0 it corresponds to that minus 20 so that's the reason it has you know shifted a bit to the right so let's first say if this is my remember the original state of stress this one over here if we just uh, you know mark uh, this as point a where point a your sigma x prime corresponds to minus 20 and tau xy corresponds to plus 60 so if we go ahead and mark that point also so first let's mark the circle and then the point a So I have marked, I have drawn my Mohr circle and a part of it is, uh, you know, sort of uh, spilled over to the negative uh, sigma over here. The reason because if you are your sigma x prime, when it is theta is oriented at zero degree, that is at point A, the first point which we try to find in the Mohr circle, it has a negative 20. So, so we have, I have marked the C over here where C lies, C is the center of the circle uh, at a distance of 35 from the origin. So we have already found this one over here. Now let's first locate the point A. Remember the point A corresponds to the state of stress where sigma x prime is equals to sigma x that you have over here and you know tau x y x prime y prime equals to tau x y. Essentially theta is oriented at the zero degree over here. So let's go ahead and mark the point A. So the A will have an ordinate of of minus 20 and plus 60 so the point a if we have to write over here so a will have the ordinate of minus 20 and 60 so let's go ahead and mark this point a so maybe it will be somewhere over here say this particular point this is my point a right so if this is my point a that why that i get which is at uh, minus 20 and 60 so my next job is to find the radius of the circle so i am going to join c with a to find the radius of the circle so this is my r my radius of the circle and it is easy to calculate because you see from this triangle over here i need to just find r that is there so that will depend on what that will depend upon uh, you know this uh, length which I know already what it is so since you know this is uh, 35 and this is at a you know distance of minus 20 so this entire length from here to this point this becomes equals to you know the, the physical just the distance becomes 55 and here this vertical is uh, this uh, uh, um, the, the 60 the positive 60 that is over there so if we, if we just go ahead and 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 find the the radius r that is there so we know that r is going to be square root of uh, 35 plus 20 square plus 60 square so if you calculate this one what you will eventually get is 81.4 so the radius of the circle is 81.4 so r we have found out as 81.4 so now that i have located uh, this one over here now you see how easy it becomes to locate the principal stresses so these are the two principal stresses which you have at the extreme right and the extreme left over here so let's go ahead and mark that so this one uh, i'm going to call this this is my <clears throat> sigma one and this is my uh, sigma 2 over here now how do i calculate sigma 1 very simple i know from the distance from the origin 
uh, for, to this point c is 35 and plus i have to add the radius over here so sigma 1 simply becomes equals to Similarly, your sigma 2 is nothing but uh, this 81.4. So, you will have this 35 minus 81.4. So, that will be the remaining this, this chunk that you have over here. So, the, that one becomes So, I have found the maximum and the minimum stresses which are the principal stresses and for these cases remember the tau's are equals to zero that is there okay so now now the question is that how do i have to rotate or where do i have to rotate so now sigma 2 corresponds to the theta p2 remember so how do i get from in the mode plane so our rotation of 2 theta in the mode plane corresponds to theta in the original plane so from here if i have to go to sigma 2 i have to go uh, the shortest way i can go this way, i have to have a clockwise rotation over here so let's just mark that so this one so this angle is nothing but your 2 theta p2 that you get over here so this particular angle is 2 theta p2 now if you calculate uh, 2 theta p2 so the tangent of 2 theta p2 will be equal to what the tan of 2 theta p2 uh, will be this perpendicular uh, divided by the this particular base so which is going to be the 20 uh, sorry this value was 60 over here 60 divided by this one this distance is 35 plus uh, this 20 which is 55 so so, it's, so that is going to be so if we just calculate that one so we have our tan of 2 theta p2 remember because twice the rotation in the mode plane which corresponds to one unit of rotation in the in the original plane that is there so that is going to be equals to 60 which is you know this vertical ordinate that you see over here divided by this horizontal ordinate 60 divided by 35 plus 20 right so if you calculate that you will get the value of theta p2 that comes out as 23.74 degrees and also note the sense of rotation is also preserved so the sense of rotation here is a clockwise sense of rotation that you have so we might also want to write that so it is clockwise okay. so now that one of them is fixed over here it is easy to draw your entire element now remember if you also if you instead of calculating this if you calculate this one the eventual element that you will get it is going to the shape is going to remain the same so let's just draw for this and i will explain a bit more over here so you say here we got we have to do a clockwise rotation of 23.74 to get this sigma 2 which is minus 46.4 okay so let's first imagine that how we are going to do this so how we are going to do this i'm going to first explain and then maybe erase that line so if this was my you know original starting point over here right i don't know whichever point that was i am having to rotate that clockwise at 23.74 so if this was my original plane then i have to rotate you know something like this so that you know i am preserving this angle of 23.74 over here and so once one of the sides is fixed the other sides you can automatically mark so let's go ahead and mark this one over here let me just quickly erase that and uh, draw the rotated element that we have so i have this 23.74 have a sense of a clockwise rotation and here i know the stress is this one minus 46.4 so once i know one of them i know the other one is going to be the 116.4 and the other on the other faces will be equal and opposite so let's go ahead and mark that right now you might be wondering that you know i uh, started with you know this angle over here why not i why don't i calculate uh, i started with this angle over here so why don't i calculate this one and and you know try to find that what is the sigma one is going to be and that is also going to be the same if you try to mark that one 
let me do that also for you that so here instead of calculating 2 theta p2 suppose i go from here to this one over here where a sense of rotation is anti-clockwise so in this space you have you know 2 theta p1 so that is going to be 180 degrees minus 2 theta p2 now if you go and calculate that so that will be uh, let me just calculate that over here so that will be 132.52 degrees so it becomes equals to 132.52 uh, right so that means your theta p1 uh, your theta your theta p1 becomes equals to uh, the half of that one so that is 66.26 Right. So, you are seeing that an anti-clockwise rotation of 66.26 will correspond to your sigma 1. So, you see it is the same thing, but it is essentially the same thing. If you start with the, you know, this, if you look at this phase over here, this phase corresponding to the, your horizontal line, this phase makes your, this anti-clockwise, this angle is 66.26 degrees and the value is 116.4 that you have over here 116.46 so it is essentially whichever you start with once you draw one of the faces the other faces get automatically fixed so don't be bothered that why are we starting with this and why not this you can start with with you know this particular thing as well right also you may be wondering that okay instead of you know going in anti-clockwise from here to here why don't i uh, take start from here and go to this particular angle you can do that as well that is also a clockwise rotation you know which face is going to it is going to give you it is going to give you this particular face over here so if you calculate this whole angle and if you divide by 2 that is going to be so you see the sense of rotation here if you are going from here to here is clockwise so here also if you go and mark this particular face so what you essentially get this is the bigger clockwise rotation that you are going to get so whichever face you whichever face you go eventually you will end up with the same diagram you can try it out on your own and you can you know uh, see that one as well so anyway so so this one this diagram that you see it is exactly identical to uh, what we had derived previously but now it's much easier to do because you do not have to in the previous one remember we had to calculate the theta then we had to plug it back to the basic equation to find out that which sigma it corresponds to so here in the more circle you can easily get which trace is response to over here so that takes care of your uh, uh, the this first problem over here so the next one is to compute the maximum in plane shear that we have over here so the maximum in plane shear so let me just erase some of these things and then come back to you to calculate the maximum in plane shear so the points of the maximum in plane shear are the very top and the very bottom of the Morse uh, circle that we have so let's go ahead and mark that so which are essentially you know these two uh, points uh, that we have over here so let maybe write this as e and f right so to get the value so here the value of the normal stress is equals to the average stress 35 and the value of the maximum shear as you can easily tell it is just going to be the radius that is 81.4 so you see here also an advantage of more circle is that you do not have to separately calculate what is the tau xy maximum it is equals to the radius of the circle that you have over here now if we uh, you know go ahead and uh, mark mark that line over so from this so this is the point of maximum shear and the value we know is your uh, 81.4 so let let me uh, go ahead and write the the coordinate for that one so the coordinate of that one is uh, uh, 35 and 81.4 right and now to go from your point a point a remember is the original place that you have over here to go from point a to the point f how do i have to go i have to go in an anti-clockwise manner so let's just go ahead and mark that and this angle this angle is going to be 2 theta s right so how do we calculate this angle 2 theta s you can again use your properties of your trigonometry to calculate uh, this angle 2 theta s or simply the easiest thing is that remember that the principal plane and the shear plane are, are you know situated 45 degrees away in the original plane so in the more plane it's 90 degrees away and that is exactly what you see you see this plane and this plane over here exactly 90 degrees away from each other now we know this 2 theta p1 so 90 degree minus 2 theta p1 will be 2 theta 
theta s so and from that you can calculate the, the theta s. so i will just go and calculate that and write it out over here you can come back later and check So theta s comes out as 21.26 degrees and you see the sense of rotation here the sense of rotation is anti-clockwise so in the transform in the original plane also it is going to be anti-clockwise and the angular rotation will be 21.26 degrees so let's go ahead and, and and mark the element that is there for the in-plane maximum shear it will rotate in an anti-clockwise manner So this is the rotated element that is there and let's mark the stresses in this one so here this was my original horizontal and now the outward normal for this you know points at 21.26 degrees right and here the value of the shear you see is positive so it is going to be pointing in this direction and once you have one of the shears done the others automatically get fixed and also in addition to this shear we have the value of which is uh, you know 81.4 you also have the normal stresses that is equals to 35 that you have this is this guy over here 35 so let's mark that positive 35 that is tensile so i hope that you know this problem example with the more circle it made your life much easier rather than having to remember and plug in into equations that is there so first as we did was that first we located the point c then the point a the radius and then it becomes very easy we took a bit more time and elaborately explained this one so it's actually very easy and very quick to figure out so once you try to do a couple of problems on your own you'll be you know able to draw the more circle very quickly and then you have to you can mark the principal stresses and the maximum intention also very quickly